Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I'm going to show you a trade that I made and that trade is in this envelope. I sent a lot of revised and fallen empires to Canada to Kylie and Kylie sent me back a big bag. Look, I've already opened it, had a little sneak peek. A lot of fourth edition cards are in here and, and some other stuff as well. And I thought, you know, I really want to show it to you guys and you know, what I like about this is we made a huge trade with cards that are kind of worth pennies, right? They're not the expensive cards. And you may argue that wouldn't have been a more affordable to just buy these. But I mean, isn't old school when you think of, you know, back in the day, we used to trade so much and a trading kind of, it hasn't disappeared fully, but it's kind of almost gone because you've got the internet and you can just sell your card, use that money to buy a new card. And I get that, but I just feel like nostalgia when I, when I make a trade, it kind of, you know, it feels good. It's, it's like I'm, I'm going into a time machine. Let me know if you still trade cards in the comments below. So um, let's have a look here. Before I show what I actually traded all my cards for, maybe it's nice to show you a picture here of uh, the cards that I actually sent to Kylie uh, to Canada. So here you can see the cards. There were like 80 plus cards, so Fallen Empire and Revised. And then what I got back is is mainly fourth edition because you see this this binder here. Oh, let me show you. I've got this binder and in this binder, I have my Chronicles collection, which is complete. And I also have my fourth edition collection, which is complete. But obviously it is a nice challenge to see, can I also get fourth edition times four? And that is where this trade comes in. So let's uh, have a look at the cards. Check if it's completely empty. Yes, it is. Slide this away. I really like the packing, by the way. It's, it's a good a good envelope. And, uh, ooh, look at that. There's something more in here. This is just to protect the card. So it's in these nine pockets, which is a pretty nice way to send them. I like, I should have done that. That's a good idea, Kylie. Um, but there's also a letter. Let's first just kind of take a look at the letter. Um, Dear Timmy, thank you for the epic trade. Yeah, it was, it was epic sending it all from Amsterdam all the way to you to Canada and you, you sending your stuff all the way uh, up to my um, my city. Let's have a look. Um, there will be far, uh, far fewer holes in my revised collection now. Thanks also for the great community you've created. The tournaments and new friends have been a pandemic highlight. Uh, that's, that's really good to, to, uh, to read. I hope we get to meet up in person one day to jam some old school, all the best Kylie. Well, I actually am planning to, at a certain point now that the pandemic is not over, but kind of under control. I don't want to jinx anything. But um, yeah, I am looking at flights and tournaments in the States and also in Canada. So it would be really nice uh, to meet you at one of those events. Um, and ooh, what's this? Okay, so maybe these are some cards outside of the trade. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, I'm going to be really difficult. I'm going to keep these until the end. I'm going to look at them at the end. Because I think these are the cards we traded for. sleeves um, and I've also organized them in color so these are all the cards it's quite a lot I think 80 plus as well about the same amount that I sent your way Kylie but I already saw some cards that we talked about that were actually a little bit too valuable and you send them anyway so thank you very much for your generosity and um, you know let's just let's just go through them one color at a time starting with the color that's not really a color right we've got the artifacts brown I guess so we've got Celestial Prism. Um, yeah, it's it's a card that you just don't see. Not, you know, 
You, you can use it when you're playing, for example, like old school EDH, right? Two and tap and add one color, uh, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Um, and then we've got Ivory Tower. That is a very playable card and also a card that represents some value. So one to cast for this artifact that reads, at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain one life for each card in hand in excess of four. And then we have Jandor's Settleback, lovely art from Arabian Nights. And we've got Navanero's Disc, another one of those cards in 4th edition that actually represents some value. So there are cards in 4th edition that do have some value. And we've got another Navanero's Disc and another one. And that means that I've got a play set of Navanero's Discs complete now, thanks to you, Kylie. Thank you very much for that, that's epic. And I've got a Jam Day Tome. Remember, it's alive. Another Jam Day Tome. And another one. Okay, now let's continue with whites. And in white, I've got like four absolutely epic. Let me just put the artifacts over here. Four absolutely epic, or three, I think, three Savannah Lines, because I already have one on my own. Believe it or not, this 2-1 vanilla for one white is a staple in old school. It's super good. It's seen in a lot of decks. So we've got one, we've got two, and we've got three Savannah Lines. And actually, the Savannah Line also has a decent value in 4th edition. So it's not like every card in 4th edition is pennies. You know, there are some cards that definitely have some value. Here we see Blessing, a card that used to be played with quite a lot. It's actually a rare um, but yeah, it's just, it's so hard to play with enchant creatures, even in old school, you know, you got to face bolts, you got to face swords. It's usually, you're usually setting yourself up for a, for a two for one when you're playing with enchant creatures. Uh, and here we see righteousness, which I love. Like I love to play this, uh, like in my wall deck and then have a sort of the ages where I can combine it with. It's just, uh, hilarious. So we have two more righteousness. And then we're gonna to continue to blue, where we see the ghost ship, the reprint from the dark. Another ghost ship. I play a lot with ghost ship, love the card. Ah, Apprentice Wizard, talking about a card I love, just so cool. And I'm still convinced this is a Disrupting Scepter. And there we have an Erosion, another Erosion. I mean, it just shows how bad kind of blue is at really destroying stuff, right? You have to play, uh, pay three blue for an enchant land. You put it on the land and then during his or her upkeep, target land's controller can pay one or one life or target land is destroyed. So wait a minute, you've got sinkhole in black, which is two black destroys a land. You've got stone rain in red, which is one red and two. You've got ice storm in green. You've got Armageddon in white. And what does blue get? Erosion. Three blue, and it's worse than all the other cards that I just mentioned. Then we see Life Tap. Ah, Life Tap, such a funny card. Gaining one life every time a forest controlled by target opponent becomes tapped. This is a multiplayer. This can be a real beast. So we've got a couple of those. Let me make some space. Oh, I love this one, Mana Short. Mana Short, the poor man's time walk. Very, very cool card. One blue and two instant. Mana short empty target player's mana pool and taps that player's lands. Great to play, for example, with Winter Orb. Um, just a fantastic card. Also nice to combine with Psychic Venom. Really a card I like. And we have multiple mana shorts. Two of those. That's fantastic. Almost a play set complete. And we've got three counter spells. That means I now have a full play set of fourth edition counter spells. Counterspell says no. And then we're going to continue with black. Here is the color black. I've been playing black more and more recently. I have to say, I, I, I'm quite liking the color. So we've got the willows, right? One black to cast flying, oh, one creature. And for one black, I can regenerate. Hey, there's a white card here. Okay. I guess I didn't do very well on the sorting. We've got Vanilla Hero. Okay, so she sneaked into the black section. We're going to put her back with the white cards. And we have Zombie Master. Two black and one to cast for a summon lord. Two, three. All zombies gain Swamp Walk and Regeneration. I play Zombie Master a lot. If you follow the channel, you know that. I just love playing my zombie deck. Um, I recently had a very cool turn one again where I could play Dark Ritual into Scape Zombies. I mean, it's just the best feeling ever. 
the best feeling ever. And yes, of course, I lost that game. Doesn't matter. Anyway, Zombie Master, this is one of the mo more valuable cards in 4th edition in black. And uh, I'm just really thankful for your generosity, Kylie, that you added this to the trade. Because they, they do hold some value. It's really worthwhile if you've got a lot of 4th edition and you care about the value and you're thinking about trading or selling them, please check the prices. Because they're just, some cards really have some value. Hypnotic Spectre, one of the best creatures in old school. 2-2 two, two flyer, 2 black and 1. Whenever it damages the opponent, the opponent has to discard a card at random. That is huge. Like if it would be he or she discards a card and the opponent can just choose, it would still be a really good card, but it would not be as good as the random effect. Just really, really good. Oh, Sengir Vampire. Sweet. 4-4 four, four flyer for 5. I'm just really completing so many play sets in this trade. It's fantastic. Bit Scorpion. So there were two cards in old school. I guess this is the oldest, right? Because Pit Scorpion is Legends. You also have uh, a snake, Marsh Viper, I believe. It's it's also in fourth edition. Perhaps it's reprinted. That's from the Dark. And what these guys do? They put poison counters. Um, they give poison counters to a player when they damage the opponent, right? This one gives one poison counter, and I believe the Marsh Viper gives two. And you could kill the opponent with 10 poison counters. So all those poison decks, those horrible decks, those overpowered decks, it all started with this little creature. Yeah, so that's history for you. I think if you play uh, whatever format, whatever they call it nowadays, but if you play standard or, or modern or whatever... Um, you just, and you play Poison, you just have to add a Pit Scorpion just out of respect for the way it all started. Just, you know, just as my two cents. Hey, we got some blue cards. We got Twiddle, so let's put Twiddle back here. Very good with Time Vault. We've got Marsh Gas. Three Marsh Gas. Minus two, minus oh, until end of turn for one black. This is, I believe, a card from the dark. If you have this card... Uh, from the dark, the original print, it's really hard to see the little moon. It's almost like it's not there, making it look like an alpha card. Or beta, I guess, when you look at the corners. Um, okay, so we've had black. Then we're going to continue to red. Not that many red cards in this trade. So I've got three fireballs and a... Oi, oi, oi! An often troll. Oh, man. Whenever I see an often troll, I now have to think of, of the often troll cup. That, that was just an epic, epic tournament. So we're going to... Put everything here, and then we have a green. We've got some other cards that I'm going to show later. So here we have green. We've got the webs. Actually, some people play these with a journey enchantress, right? So plus O plus two, and now uh, the creature that you've enchanted can block creatures with flying. We've got timber wolves. That's so funny about old school, right? Timber wolves is a rare a one one banner for one green. And this is a common, a 1-1 one, one banner for one white. So the white version is common. The green version is rare. I do love the art of Timberwolves. Very beautiful. Oh, and here we have the card Marsh Viper. So this is the card I talked about before. when talking about the poison card. So you've got Pit Scorpion and Marsh Viper. And yes, uh, people have tried to build um, poison decks in old school. It, you can do it. Will you win a lot? No, but you can definitely do it. So this is Marsh Viper. Then we've got Tsunami, a card that I'm so scared of. Whenever I play Timmy's Spellbook, I mean, I guess I'm not scared, but you always worry about it. And I had this match where I had a pirate ship in the game. I, it was going okay, not great, but it was going okay. And then my opponent casts a Tsunami. All my islands are gone. And the worst case, because pirate ship is island home, uh, you know, my ship sank. So I lost my ship and all my lands. That was, it wasn't pretty. And I actually managed to win that game, by the way. So that was one of my better victories, but it wasn't a very pretty moment. So here we've got Aspect of Wolf by Jeff A. Mangus, who also made Tracker. And Tracker kind of looks like the Tracker is looking for Wolf. I always, I always see a connection there. Let me know if, if, if you see it as well. So we've got three Aspects of Wolves. That's quite nice. Ah, beautiful Elfish Archer. Maybe... The most epic art by Anson Maddox. Anson Maddox has made so many beautiful cards, but yeah, I, I'm, I, it's hard for me to make a decision, but I think maybe this is my favorite Anson art. There's just so much power coming from the card, and everybody used to used to play this back in the day. Now that Factory is so famous, you know, hardly anybody plays with the Archers anymore, but yeah, Archers used to be, you know, the big man in, uh, in a lot of green decks. 
we've got some more arches here. So that's another place that complete the hurricane. Yep. Yeah. Three hurricanes and that's it. So these are all my fourth edition cards. Let me just kind of show you. I'm going to hoover over because this was just a huge trade. Look at that. Look at the amount of fourth edition. I am super happy with this, Kylie. Amazing that we could make this trade and it just feels really, really good to still trade in old school magic. I think it's really a part of the game that's often forgotten. So this was great, a great trade. It's all gonna go into this binder um, to kind of try to complete my times four fourth edition. But um, there are also some other cards. We traded a little bit of, you know, old school, old school. And uh, we got these Lay Druids that are super cool. I mean, lay druid, you know, I mean, tap druid to untap a land of your choice. This action can be played as an interrupt. I mean, there are so many special lands in old school. This card should maybe see more play, although three mana for a 1-1 one, one is pretty steep. But still, let me know. Let me know what you think about lay druid. And then we also have this card. Bam! A drudge skeleton. Just a lovely card. I love the art. Unlimited edition, a 1-1, one, one, one black and one, 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 and one black to regenerate. And then last but not least, so these were kind of, these cards, I, I don't know what they are. I didn't expect them. So I'm curious. Ooh, this looks like some kind of altar. You know what? I'm going to switch it up. This, oh, also is an altar. Look at that clone. Nice sword. <laughs> Sweet. Thank you, Kylie, 2020. Uh, uh, 20, 2020? No, 2022, sorry. Anyway, sweet. Yeah, man, you, Kylie, you're very welcome for this trade. I have to thank you, actually, you know, adding the zombie masters and then these cards, fantastic. And then the last one, look at that. There's some paint here on the sides. We're going to flip it around. Oh, that is pretty sweet. That is pretty sweet. Let's see if I can take it out safely. I think I can. Oh, it's one of those. This is really nice. You know, Kylie, I think I'm going to play this. Look at that. That is a cool island. I did not know you were an artist. Very nice. I'm really liking this island. I think this is going to be the picture, the thumbnail picture um for this for this video thank you fantastic well this was it this was uh the trade and what a huge trade it was or i should say the trade video thank you very much for watching i would love to hear from you uh, let me know in the comments below when is the last time that you made a magic trade and what was the trade about um let me know you know am i the only one um that's still trading cards well kylie as well but uh, let me know in the comments below, do you still trade? If so, what was your last trade? For now, thank you very much for watching. And before you go, please take a moment to like, share, and possibly subscribe on Timmy Talks if you're not a subscriber yet. And uh, I guess it's time now to go to the end scroll and take a, take a look at our fantastic, amazing, wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do? Somebody can see.